this summer. Jellyfish, pancake fish, lemonade fish, irritating spiker type fish aren't the only things to be found under the ocean. Present Day Production presents Finding Nero. Morning, lads. What's going on today, then? Oh, same old, trying to find bloody Nero again. I'll go this way. Or maybe this way. Here it is. Oh, yeah. Thanks, mate. You may not think you need a monitor controller, certainly if you have a desktop style audio interface such as the SSL and Audient models we reviewed recently. They have a large volume knob right to hand and surely a volume controller is just a glorified volume knob, right? Well, yes, but most offer a lot of extra features that can make them a really worthwhile addition to your studio. This ability to easily switch between different sets of speakers or select various input sources or to quickly be able to plug in an external source such as a phone or a laptop to reference a track are just some of the features that can make them a valuable addition to your studio. For the home studio owner, there are two types to consider, passive and active. Passive controllers contain no powered electronics in the audio path, and while these may appeal to the audio purist, they can be prone to external noise and interference and can't always offer the feature set that active types can. Active types can offer far greater functionality, but do these electronics take something away from the audio path? We'll be testing that later in this video. So let's have a look at the Audient Nero. We've had this unit in our studio for around a month now, and once again, as with all our video reviews so far, We've bought this unit ourselves and are not sponsored by Audion in any way. The Nero is built into a hefty angled desktop style black painted steel case and weighs in at a solid two kilograms. It certainly feels like a substantial piece of kit when you pull it out of its box. Indeed, the overall build quality is excellent. The back panel connections are secured directly to the metalwork and the switches and dials feel firm and well built. The Nero allows you to connect two external stereo sources on balanced pairs of quarter inch jack, a third stereo pair designed as a dedicated Qmix, and a fourth input switchable from a choice of twin phono or mini jack auxiliary input, and two digital options on either speedif coax or optical. These inputs are switchable from the four illuminated input selectors on the front panel, with the ALT input for auxiliary or digital having its own selector switch and input trim dial. There is also an input for an external talkback mic as well as the built-in microphone on the front panel. Output wise, the unit is equipped with three stereo pairs of line level monitor outputs, main and two alts, alongside a mono summed subwoofer output and a generous four headphone outputs. The mono sub output contains no low pass filtering and outputs the full frequency range, so it could be used to connect a mono grot box style speaker such as a mix cube. If being used as a sub output, this can be linked to any of the main speaker selectors so it's activated automatically when that set of speakers is selected. Each headphone output has its own dedicated volume control as well as independent source selection. Headphone outputs two, three and four are presented on quarter inch sockets on the back panel and use electronic switching for source selection. Headphone output one is available on paralleled quarter inch and mini jack on the front panel and is relay switched, offering a slightly different monitor grade audio path, better suited to critical listening. The headphone outputs can cater for headphones with impedance of 12.8 ohms and upwards and offer plenty of volume. Headphone one always follows the monitor speaker's source selection and doesn't receive talkback whereas the other three default to the Qmix with talkback, but these are all configurable by the user. Speaker monitoring functions consist of illuminated cut and dim buttons, as well as summed mono and left polarity reverse options. The combination of the latter two allows for monitoring of the stereo difference signal, something which Mark in particular values highly. 
and which many monitor controllers omit. The dim button provides 15 decibels of attenuation by default, but any amount between 15 and 30 can be dialed in simply by holding down the dim button until it flashes and adjusting the volume knob until the desired level is set. The two alt monitor outputs can also be trimmed in the same way by holding down their respective selection buttons. So this is a very customizable and well-specified unit, but how does it stack up in the sound quality department? Mark? Before we get into the sound quality of this device, Grace, give us a quick rundown on the tech specs. Balanced inputs, nominal level plus 4 dBU. Unbalanced aux inputs, nominal level minus 10 dBV. Trim range plus or minus 12 dB. Toslink and coaxial digital inputs at 24-bit 44.1 to 192 kHz. Speaker output total harmonic distortion 0.0015% with a 1 kHz test tone at 0 dBU. Signal to noise ratio 100 dBU. Frequency response 20 Hz to 22 kHz. 12 volt DC external power supply at 2 amps. It hasn't escaped my attention that you were just trying to get me to spell butts. The critical thing with any monitor controller is that it completely disappears sonically when you're using it. Any coloration added to the audio signal, noise or distortion is bad. This is the main argument in favour of passive devices as there are no electronics in the signal path. However, one of the most difficult parts of a monitor controller for any manufacturer to get right is the simplest control on the thing, the volume dial. A simple dual gang potentiometer can become very noisy and scratchy over time and this was the main issue we had with our otherwise excellent Drama CMC2. It quickly became unusable shortly after the warranty ran out and whilst the pot is plug and play and fairly easily switched out, it's a bit of a faff to have to take the unit apart every 18 months and replace the pot. Manufacturers of higher end controllers, particularly those found in mastering consoles from the likes of Crookwood and SBL, have many different approaches from switched relay designs such as those found in the Cranesong Ava set, or however you pronounce it, to preset passive attenuation as found in the excellent controller from 2400 Audio. With the Nero, Audient have chosen to take a very different approach and whilst most of the signal switching is achieved using sealed relays, 18 in total, the main speaker monitoring volume knob controls a stereo electronic stepped attenuator chip which not only ensures crackle free volume adjustments but perfect left and right channel matching at all volume levels. So no wayward image shifts when monitoring at very low volumes, indeed the channel matching falls within a 0.1 dB tolerance across the entire volume range. With the 0.25 dB attenuation steps being completely inaudible. But how does it sound? Well, in bench tests, it holds up extremely well. But as regular viewers of our channel know, I love nothing more than a good old fashioned null test to determine whether something is affecting my audio or not. So let's compare this, the sound of the Nero, with that of a very short piece of wire. For those of you who don't know what a null test is, watch the rest of our videos because we do a lot of them. Basically, it means that if you take two identical signals and reverse the polarity of one of them so it's completely out of phase with the other one, if they're identical, they'll completely cancel out. If they're not identical, you'll only hear the differences between them. So that means we can use a null test to ascertain the difference in sound between the audience Nero and just a piece of wire. And if this sounds as good as a piece of wire, that's really about as good as you can hope for from a decent monitor controller. So let's play channel one which is just the piece of wire so this is literally outputs of the converters through a piece of wire back into the inputs of the converters and let's have a listen to channel two on its own which is going through the Nero sounds pretty good they sound kind of the same to me let's play them both together and then we'll only hear the difference between them nothing so that's actually remarkable that's really really good so this uh was with the volume control on the nero set to maximum so it's not the little microprocessor step to attenuator thing inside isn't performing any attenuation on the signal at all but i'm really interested in hearing what the attenuator actually does to the audio as compared with resistors or a, or a dual gang potentiometer so next up we've got the Nero at with the volume set at three quarters of the way up which is this one here and again we can hear that on its own so as we know there's audio coming through but when we compare it with the original with the phase reversed 
Again, nothing, absolutely nothing. This is with the volume control halfway up, nothing, and with the volume control a quarter of the way up, nothing. So that's really quite amazing. That means basically this sounds no different to a piece of wire. So that really is the best you can hope for. Now there was a type when I really zoomed in um, using metering plugins and stuff like that, there was a tiny bit of noise and sort of sizzle at the bottom. So I've amplified that massively. And by massively, I mean massively. I have something like 90 dB or something ridiculous um, to actually get it so as you can hear it. Um, and this is what it sounds like. So this is the actual difference between the original file and once it's been through the Nero. So it's doing something, but it's really not audible under normal listening conditions, even under extreme listening conditions, you really, really, really have to amplify it massively to hear any kind of artifacts in the audio. Uh, so as far as the null test goes, this little puppy, massive thumbs up from me. In terms of quality of headphone output, this is great, just about as good as anything else out there I've heard. I couldn't really perceive any difference in the quality of output from headphone one to two, three or four. So that again is testament to the design work of Dave Dearden and the team at Audion who are just knocking it out of the park these days. Great job, Audion. One last thing to mention, and that's the digital input. We have the PreSonus Studio Live Series 3 desk as the hub for tracking and mixing at the studio, but I don't use it for mastering other than as a control surface as the output converters just aren't quite up to scratch for me. They're good, but they're by no means mastering grade and don't even really compare to the SSL or Audion interfaces we reviewed a couple of videos back. The digital inputs on this feature the AKM AK4452 chipset and the analog electronics surrounding that chipset are excellent. I wired up a cable to take the AES digital output of the PreSonus to the two channel speed if input of the Nero and compared that with the bare bones analog output of the PreSonus. The Nero again came up trumps. The sound was fuller, more open and sounded as though a thin veil had been removed. Stereo imaging improved and the listening test revealed the conversion in this to be very similar to that in my mastering setup, albeit with slightly less dynamic range, but we're talking 112 dB compared to 118 dB, so really nothing in it. If you've got an older audio interface or are using something like this in your studio that has a digital output, then if you decide to go for a Nero, it would be well worth your time to compare the differences in output between your existing analog outputs and the conversion on this. This is great, really great. Top marks audience, I'd happily use this in either all analog or digital mode for mastering. It sounds, well, as good as a piece of decent copper. It's a 10 out of 10 for me as far as sound quality is concerned. So, all in all, this is a fantastic bit of kit for really not a lot of money. We got hold of this for £350 and I can certainly say it was an investment well worth making. The sound quality is incredible. It's a solid build and it has plenty of features for everything from the small home studio to a larger commercial studio such as this one. Sometimes you find equipment that tries to do too much and packs too many features in at the cost of sound quality or reliability. But But this doesn't suffer from these problems. It's just an all round great piece of equipment and I'm sure it will serve us well for years to come. We have more competitions and freebies to win. We have more competitions and freebies to win in some upcoming videos. Well done to David and Harvey for winning the microphones from our Fame vs Shaw video. Make sure you don't miss out on winning any future competitions by liking and subscribing and of course, ding the ding dong, so you're the first to see our videos. We'll see you next time. Right, what do you want? You, you want chips, don't you? Chips and Marmite. Come on then.